in the projects, it's quiet by day, but it's loud at night. C.J. Blair grew up in the inner city. His mother worked on the streets, and the only father C.J. ever knew was her pimp. There was no one there to really nurture me uh, and keep me from some of the ills that you encounter just living in, you know, inner city Washington, D.C. Before long, C.J. was selling drugs and running with gangs. My intentions was to get my mother off of a corner. And when you present an opportunity for me to make $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 a night, then I'm connecting that to my mother can stop selling her body and getting beat up by men. But there were some bright spots in his life. He spent his summers at his great-grandmother's house, which had a totally different atmosphere. My great-grandmother believed God for everything. I mean, everything. If it was bread, if it was rent money, whatever it was, she believed it. So she would line me up every night on the side of the bed, and she'd be praying, and, you know, she'd be blessing and so forth and so on, and God keep them. And I was like, wow, this woman is serious. You know, I was the bad guy in the family. I was like the roughest one. But she would never speak as negative about me as the rest of the family. She would always say that I was, you know, a man of God and God gonna do it. And, and, and she spoke that in me. While his great grandmother had a strong influence on CJ, he wasn't ready to change. I was scared of hell. I really was scared of hell. And, and my great grandmother, she really hammered that home. I knew becoming a Christian was going to take me leaving the lifestyle that I had grown accustomed to. So I wasn't going to play with God. CJ dropped out of school and at the age of 13 was arrested for the first time on an assault charge. He spent the next 12 years in and out of jail. Then after serving a six year prison term for robbery and malicious wounding, CJ went into the rap music business with some guys he met in prison. I was in the studio one night and the studio engineer began to talk about Jesus. He said, if it's a Jesus and you haven't accepted him and you die, you're going to be short. And God began to start dealing with me at that point. Just a couple of weeks later, CJ was driving home from a major drug deal. And I'm listening to this rap group, and the rap group says that they have platinum currency cards with the mark of the beast on them. When I heard that, something triggered in me. All that talk that my great-grandmother was talking about back then, when I was like eight, nine, here it is now. So immediately, I said, I'm going to hell. And as soon as I thought that, it was like a, a, a bolt hit me. My hands flew up, and I began saying hallelujah, hallelujah. And I heard Jesus say, CJ, audibly, like I'm talking to you right now. CJ, and I said, yes, Lord. And he said, take it out. I popped the tape out the tape deck and started messing with the radio. The guy on the radio said, do you know what miracles are? The radio guy was talking to me, literally. But I knew it was God. I'm scared, because I'm like, I'm getting ready to die. And this is what God do to you before he kill you. He lets you know he was real. <laughs> so next thing I know, my hand is grabbing the Coke and throwing it out the window. The marijuana, the cigarettes, everything that my hands touched, it threw out the window. So I remember saying to myself, this better be Jesus. Because I done threw away all this money. And these folks gonna kill me. When CJ got home, he went down to the basement. And I began to pray. I had never prayed as an adult like that. The next day, my mother had came down there and was like, you know, what happened? What was wrong with you? And I literally just said, I'm saved. I just, I just knew that that was what had happened. I'm saved. CJ turned his life over to God and enrolled in Bible college. He also got rid of his guns. But for an ex-drug dealer in the streets of Washington, he was vulnerable. It wasn't even safe for him to get a haircut. When I was at the barber shop, I was known to tell my barber not to spin me when he cut my head, but to walk around me and keep me facing the door. Because at that time in the inner city, a lot of young people were getting killed in barbershops. 
and I would face the door, and if anything came through the door do harm to me, I was going to get at it before it got at me. While CJ was getting his hair cut, the dealer he owed money to walked in. This individual was not one that you really wanted to play with. He was a gangster. He would kill you uh, on sight. When he comes through the door, I automatically reach for the gun so I can do something. But I didn't have the gun. The guy walks up on me, and he says, I heard you're with Jesus now. And I said, uh, yeah. And he said, pray for me. And he turned around and walked out. And that was a blessing because God really spoke to me and said, I told you I can protect you. Today, CJ is a pastor, ministering in the same streets where he used to hustle drugs. I think people need to see people that have made mistakes, uh, but had one point said yes, and Jesus just came and changed their lives. I live a good life as a result of the gospel, the purpose that God has instilled in my life. I represent the guy that was rebellious, that went to prison, the guy that had been shot, that did all the wrong things. But I show forth his glory because at any moment when there's one word from the Lord that's interjected in your life, all your past can change. 